I'm Portia Young. Welcome to the April 2017 edition of 1036 here on Milwaukee PBS. 658, that's the number of undocumented immigrants deported nationwide on a typical day last year, according to Homeland Security. Immigrant advocates believe that number could dramatically rise under President Trump's immigration enforcement policy. One Waukesha County family hopes they're not part of that statistic. They wanted to share their story on 1036. Cuando salimos, se acercó una persona y me dijo, dice, oh, bonita troca, bonita familia, pero la de este país. Jose Flores, along with his family, took his message to the streets in February joining thousands in Milwaukee to march on a day without Latinos. This father of four says he's living in uncertainty since President Donald Trump began fulfilling his campaign promise to crack down on undocumented immigrants, separating families and sparking fear and panic in communities. This massive movement opposed Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark's proposal to turn deputies into immigration agents as part of President Trump's executive order to deport undocumented immigrants. It is estimated that around 50,000 people marched on that day to show their support for undocumented immigrants and refugees who say they are struggling under the new presidential administration. As of 2014, there are about 11.1 .1 million undocumented immigrants living in the United States, 80,000 of whom are living here in Wisconsin, according to the Pew Research Center, a nonpartisan polling organization. Luis, this is Jose's wife, Lola. Every morning, they wake up early to start off their day. Jose Flores plays with his youngest girl before leaving for work while Lola gets the rest of the children ready for school. But for Jose and Lola, ever since the new presidential administration took over, each morning has become the start of another day living in fear. Fear that they might be separated from their children by the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, also known as ICE. The Flores family, whose four children are American citizens, decided to speak to Milwaukee PBS about the challenges they face. The more important thing to, uh, for my family is uh, we stay together. I can't imagine the separation with my little We live with fear every day. It's um, not easy. Sí, existe un miedo a la deportación por el lecho de mis hijos. No por no por mí, por el de mi esposa, sino el que será si me ponen en orden de deportación. ¿Qué va a pasar con mis hijos? I'm worried that um, you know. There's been rumors that there's a, there's been raids, and well, I'm scared that what if they go to the store and they get taken by ICE. Retos es uno manejar sin licencia y manejamos por por una necesidad y también miedo por manejar que lo pare uno la policía y nos pongan en orden de deportación para por usar el perfil racial. The Flores family says it's not just the risk of deportation that scares many of the families, but also the negative attitude that anti-immigrant supporters have taken against the undocumented since President Trump took office. I told them, I'm going to go to the store. And he said, Luis, my son of nine years old said, I'm going to go with you, dad. I'm very happy. When we came out, there was a person and said, I'm going to go to the store. Dice, oh, bonita troca, bonita familia, pero la verdad de este país. Dice, me dijo mi nene, dice, papi, ¿por qué no está diciendo así? Y le digo, no pasa nada, mi hijo. Dice, lárguense de este país, este país no les pertenece. Dice, tenemos nuevo presidente, se llama Donald Trump. Entonces... Eso a mí me duele mucho, no por mí, por lo que él me diga a mí, sino por lo que yo siento y mi nene siente. Jose and Lola have lived in the U.S. for many years. Going back to Mexico, their country of origin would be very difficult. 
They say the ongoing violence among cartels would endanger their lives if they return. De hecho, hay un cartel en, en donde yo soy. Entonces, ese sería mi temor. Yo no puedo ir a un país así. Immigration attorney Kane Ulahan was reached out by the Flores family for legal advice. He says that a pathway to legal status for undocumented immigrants like the Flores is not easy to obtain. There are not that many options under immigration law to get legal status, and if they had an option, they would certainly do it. Uh, so you can only really get it if you have, for example, a family member who is a U.S. citizen or permanent resident to apply for you, and if you don't have that, it's very difficult and oftentimes impossible to get legal status under our current laws. Brian Westrate is the chairman of the Wisconsin 3rd District Republican Party. He commented on the conditions that make undocumented immigrant families like the Flores a subject to deportation. I don't know any, anyone who wishes to take Mr. Flores and his wife uh, and deport them, um, you know, make their four children parentless here in the United States. I think that what the Flores family, or what Mr. Flores I would say, is that we need to um, work together. And by we, uh, the American people, but through our representatives, because again, they're the only ones who can write law. They're the only ones who can change law. We need to work together to come up with a pathway to legalization. Make me a cake. Hemos buscado opciones y no hay. Este, mi esposo por parte de su trabajo, este, le buscaron abogado, le buscaron este. Pero como nosotros sería como la primera generación de nuestra familia a venir a Estados Unidos. Nosotros no tenemos que tu tío, que tu pariente, que tu hermano. O sea, no tenemos una familia. O sea, la única forma es que hicieran una reforma o que hicieran DAPA para los padres. Under the current immigration laws, the current solution for Lola and Jose to start a process for legal status would be through their children. But for a U.S. citizen child to petition for a parent, the child must be at least 21 years of age. Well, it feels good to know that um, there's a point that in my life that I can help them, like they have helped me. And, you know, but it's hard to know that I'm, I'm 15 right now, and that's until you're 21, I believe. So it's a long time to be waiting, but we're going to try our best to do that. We will not allow our people to be deported. We will not allow our people to be banned. Cristina Menortiz is the director of Voces de la Frontera, Wisconsin's leading immigrants' rights organization. Jose Flores is the board president of this organization. Cristina Menortiz says the immigration system in the United States is broken and the current anti-immigrant laws have to change. We need laws that are just that are going to treat people with the respect, all people, with the respect and dignity that they deserve. And if you have laws that don't do that, then those laws need to be changed. Um, child labor was legal once. Slavery was legal. Women did not have the right to vote before 1920. There's lots of laws that have been changed. But it's the way we change those laws is that we make sure that we lead with our values. When you're crafting policy, OK, and when you're trying to come up with rules to govern 310 million people spanning 2,500 miles of landmass, 50 unique states, all under a federal umbrella, you've got to use your brain. I mean, it has to come. It, emotions are not going to solve this problem. No es fácil. No es fácil. Recibimos muchas críticas, a veces hasta burlas de la gente. Pero, como te digo, es la lucha. Mi familia decidió salir a la luz por ellos, por la gente que no se atreve a salir a luchar. Que la gente sepa que soy una indocumentada no me da, no me da miedo a decirlo porque, porque habíamos millones, no soy yo sola. I think the Flores family has um, shown a lot of courageousness in uh, challenging our elected officials. And an example of that is uh, the Flores family confronting Governor Walker in Iowa when he was running for the presidency. At that time, he had made the decision to have Wisconsin block deferred action for parents of American citizens, which would have protected uh, the parents, um, Lola and Jose, from deportation similar to deferred action for childhood arrivals. My name is Jose, I came from Waukesha, Wisconsin, to ask you a question. Why? 
Are you blocking? Why are you blocking Thank you. I'm the governor. I don't know what you're doing with it right now. I went that time because I've seen, heard, and read about his politics and his views, and I'm not, I don't agree with that. And um, well, that time I went because of my family and my friends. Back to my question why are you trying to break my family apart? I had a live hit, so I didn't want to spend 30 seconds answering your question. For us, uh, we're a nation of, of laws, and unfortunately, the president last year, after saying 22 times before last year that he couldn't make the law up himself, he said he wasn't the emperor, he was the president of the United States, and he said he couldn't change the law, he decided to change the law, even though the courts have now said he can't do that. So my point is you got to follow the law, follow the process. I completely sympathize with the situation you're all in. And other what impresses me is their level of understanding that this is how they defend their families, that they have to be up front, that they're, they have done nothing wrong, that we have a system that is wrong that needs to be changed. Yo lo que le quiero decir a estas personas de que no todos somos criminales. Uh -huh. Todos venimos a trabajar. Yo me he portado bien en este país. Uh -huh. He contribuido bien a este país. Soy, hago todo derecho. El simplemente es de que no tengo un seguro social un permiso para trabajar, pero hasta ahí nada más. Y yo les diría que yo no soy criminal, ni mi familia, y varios que nos encontramos como yo no somos criminales. And speaking for the Republican Party, there's a great deal of compassion and acknowledgement that, that our society is largely better off with people like the Flores family in it than without it. At the same time, we have to find a pathway to legalization. The solution cannot simply be to just continue to let them exist in the shadows. Yo me siento bien agradecido con este país porque este país me ha dado todo y tengo una hermosa familia y pues lo único que les quiero decir que se pongan que sea unos segunditos en mis zapatos y que lo que queremos es trabajar bien en este país, tener una vida bien y salir adelante con nuestras familias. For more on this 1036 story and President Trump's immigration enforcement policy, go to milwaukeepbs.org. Millennials are believed to be a major part of Milwaukee's growth and revitalization. A real estate tracking firm ranks Milwaukee second in the Midwest in the number of 18 to 35 year olds moving into the 50 largest metro areas. Milwaukee's black professional class has many millennials and some economists say keeping them in the city can be a challenge. 1036's Everett Marshburn and Naomi Waxman from our partners at Milwaukee Neighborhood News Service bring us the story about one group that's trying to help. This is Social X in Action. It's a Milwaukee Millennials Club for Minority Professionals, and it definitely parties with a purpose. In a city that leading economic analysts say is one of the most segregated in the nation, it's hard to find and keep young black professionals. Social X began back in 2012 as an opportunity for us to open up opportunities for uh, diverse professionals here in the city of Milwaukee, we just found a, a challenge to be um, a diverse professional, find like-minded people. Uh, a lot of my friends and I that started Social X were always kind of in the pocket of people where they will always ask us what's to do here, how do I find like-minded people, you know, how do I find my people. Rennell Washington is an executive at Town Bank. He and Social X president Nye Davidson were two of the six co-founders of the group. There's been a lot of transplants that have come to this city and who've gone on because they couldn't find their way. And we just kind of saw the opportunity to kind of be that link and that connection to the city to champion what Milwaukee has and to help with talent retention to keep people here in the city. The group sponsors activities like fitness runs and walks, restaurant outings, arts events, and even trips to the Linden Sculpture Garden for arts and crafts classes. <laughs> Laquetta Caldwell has been in Milwaukee since 2001. She was born in Kentucky, and at a young age, she wanted to be a performer. So, of course, she moved to New York. 
Well, in New York, I wanted to be a famous actress. So uh, growing up in Paducah on the farm, I said I'm gonna be a, so when I was in New York, I did some film work, I did a lot of theater, and I studied drama therapy for a year, and then shifted my career to education and theater. And when I moved to Milwaukee, I was working for the Milwaukee Repertory Theater. Then I got a job at First Stage. Uh, one of the funders for the Boys and Girls Club piloted a program at Daniels Mardet Boys and Girls Club. And you know how you get bit by something. I fell in love with, uh, with the Boys and Girls Club. I have the awesome opportunity to expose kids to the arts. What I like about Social X is that they're very welcoming. So it took me a long time to really get my feet um, grounded in Milwaukee and so social X I would like to see more professionals coming together to help each other out because we all have a different niche that we're really strong in. Is everyone familiar with the color wheel or color mixing? Michaela Ellison is from Milwaukee. She's the creative director for Social X. She works in marketing and management at Prism Technical and has her own company Elastic Designs LLC. There are always events going on in Milwaukee um, but it's hard to find events that are catered towards us that play the type of music that we're interested in listening to or serve the drinks that we um, are used to drinking. Um, so trying to combine you know, what we like with the preferences that um, we have. Um, so we reached out to a few different businesses that we work with frequently, um, such as like Poor Men's. Uh, we recently had an event at Evolution. And what we do is we're introducing the young professional crowd to these different places um, and letting them know that this is a spot that you can bring your friends. This is a place that you can go instead of you know your usual uh, bar or lounge or area. Um, that it's, it's something that you can do and to, to get out and try new things. Savion Grinnell is an attorney in the Milwaukee Public Schools Employee Relations Department. His family moved to Milwaukee in 2005 from the South. He graduated from Wauwatosa West High School, attended Bethune-Cookman University, and got his law degree from Texas Southern University. Milwaukee was pretty much new to me when I came back. Uh, I spent most of my transformative years in Florida and Texas. So being back in the city was almost uh, a new experience to me. Social X has, has been a good experience for me, uh, simply for the fact that when you think of the size of Milwaukee, yes, it's a large city, but it also has a, a small town feel. Uh, being from Alabama, it, 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 I, I kind of get that feel from it. Um, and Social X has been able to allow me to integrate into the city, um, build relationships with young, like-minded minority individuals. And it's just been really great uh, to know that there's a lot of other talent out there and there is a group that, that talent can be cultivated. Um, and then uh, the networking aspects that come with it, the social aspects that come with it, has been really great so far. William McIntosh III works for one of Milwaukee's financial services institutions. He's originally from Chicago and has also worked in Washington, D.C. and Pittsburgh. His job transferred here from Philadelphia. I like the fact that the city is growing, and it's a playground for ambitious individuals. Um, you can see a lot of things that are starting to come into the conversation or come into the fold with a lot of the organizations here, but you need support and uh, unity between these organizations to make it come to uh, fruition. A lot of the individuals that are within Social X or associate themselves with Social X are in other organizations in which they try to partner with. In August, we'll be hitting our five-year mark, and we've just been blessed to be able to be that link and be a part of the fabric of young professionals here in the city of Milwaukee. For more on Social X, check out Naomi Waxman's story for Milwaukee Neighborhood News Service. You can find the link on 1036 at milwaukeepbs.org. Our next story involves a recipe for visual history. It starts with the popular Milwaukee pizzeria, mix in a love of history and culture, plus a UWM professor and several talented young artists, and you get something special in Walker's Point. Every morning I sit here and I make an espresso and I read the headlines in the New York Times and uh, I look out that window and I see a corrugated gray surface with a uh, brown painted concrete block below it. It's about 20 feet tall-ish in the middle, and uh, I'd say roughly 50 feet long. That's a big plane, there's a lot of potential there. 
Russell Rosetto is the owner of Transfer Pizzeria at the corner of First and Mitchell on Milwaukee's south side. About three years ago, as he gazed out his window at the empty wall across the street on the Butters Fetting property, he had an idea. After contacting friends at Artworks for Milwaukee, an organization that employs teens, a plan was hatched to create a mural. To me, it's, um, it really it touches my heart a lot because I did not know much about migrant labor. I didn't know much about uh, what a lot of our, our, our brothers and sisters do, you know, for, uh, in order to you know, just have a better life. When your whole student body is brown youth, I mean, you gotta be teaching this kind of stuff. But I wasn't, I didn't know about any of this. The struggles that are shown here are struggles that my family members have gone through, people who I know have gone through. So I feel like this will connect with not only just me, but with the community. They've really taken uh, uh, possession of the, of the mural. They really relate to it, and it's really extraordinary what, uh, what it's done for them. The mural depicts the history of Wisconsin's Latino migrant workers and their struggle for civil rights. It was researched, designed, and painted by numerous high school and college students under the direction of Raul Deal, who runs the community art program at UW-Milwaukee. I think they've all, they've all gained uh, certainly a knowledge of that history and excitement for uh, the possibilities of, of transforming through activism. That all the themes were uh, came out of what, when we talked to people, we asked them what did they think was important to put in the mural. So when we talked, for instance, to Lupe Martinez, he wanted agriculture in there. Of course, we were going to do that anyway because it's a migrant service organization. So the first part is the migrant workers. Um, the, the second part is the, the activism, and in fact, really, the first few panels have to do with directly with the, with the activism that took place in different areas of life. So you have the march from Watoma to Madison, which was uh, a huge deal, and that took place in 1966. Community activist Jesus Salas, a key figure in the early days of UMOS, United Migrant Opportunity Services, spoke to the student artists at the UWM Kenilworth Building studio space. Salas is depicted prominently in the mural, as is the march he helped organize back in 1966. How old are you? <laughs> Real young. No, not very many gray hairs. Uh, 66, it was in my early 20s, 21, 22, yeah. 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 You remember those guys? Yeah. All of them. Tell, tell of us them. about them. Well, well, the, you see that guy in the blue shirt over there? He, co he comes over to the Mars. He comes over to the high guys. How are you going? Hey, how come you didn't paint a tie on me? Add one. No, 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 I don't even have one. This guy comes over, this guy comes over to the march. Like his name is Ortega, and he comes over with his blue shirt, and he's got his dress shoes on. I said, Ortega, we're going to march for 80 miles in five days. You got, yeah, but they told us that there's going to be a lot of cameras. But this is Salvador Sanchez. He was a migrant worker from the Texas Valley, working for Libby McNall and Libby. So what's your relationship with these kids? Oh, I, I love them. I, I just, there's, this is just a handful of them. There's about a dozen of them. And I, I've been with them, uh, uh, I think I was the first interviewee. First in interviewee, and I've been with them at different sessions uh, for over the last year and a half. Uh, gotten to an extraordinary group. So Jesus Salas, who is the first uh, executive director, and then Lupe Martinez, who is the current one and has been for many, many years the director of, of UMOS. Just do the whole thing that color. That looks like the right color. That looks really good, actually. Make it a little bit darker with the gray. You could mix some of that up there. We have lots of talented kids. I mean, all of the youth on here are excellent. And they all bring a different skill to the, to the process. Um, it enriches the way that I understand the whole creative process. Um, it, it gives me a lot of hope for the future, working with engaged young people and uh, watching how they assume not just the responsibility to carry out tasks, but also the interest in the issues. It's inspiring. So they organized industry, they organized the breweries, the foundries, um, and then they had people 
at the Latino desk at these different companies, but they couldn't get good jobs because they didn't have education. Jesus Salas told us that around that time there was only like seven Latino students at UWM and that they th didn't think that that was right. There wasn't people who had access to education, so they did a protest in the chancellor's office. That was one of the key things that we um, wanted to include in the mural. That's Marla Anderson and Graciela de la Cruz, both of whom were involved um, in the Chicanx civil rights movement in the 60s here at UWM. So Marla was older. Uh, she was older than all the women. She and the other older women in the movement were, they called themselves Las Adelitas, just like the women from the Mexican Revolution. Um, but then Graciela was studying here at UWM too. The um, final side of the mural is about Mexican Fiesta, which a lot of people just know as a celebration at like the Summerfest grounds, but there's a cool aspect of um, raising money to give kids scholarships, so we thought that was really awesome and that we wanted to include that. What can transfer patrons expect when they look out the window this spring? I would hope somebody that's, that's looking across the street and sees the mural is, in, is inspired to, to uh, try and learn more about it. It's a narrative painting, so they're going to at least note the stories that are illustrated. We tried to be purposeful about making that clear, what the stories were about, by including headlines from different moments in history. And um, that was important also to us because, you know, there are lots of versions of history. And um, if we can use the words of the reporters that followed it, like Joe Sandin, who was one of the principal journalists at the time, that recorded the migrant movement, if we can use those as a, a way of enhancing the understanding of the general public of what happened, then that's, that's valuable. It seems like it was 50 years ago when they were marching from Watoma to Madison, and now you have the same people mar marching for other reasons, which is human rights, right? Something that um, frustrates me all the time is like, why are we still fighting for this? You know, it's all these years later. But um, Marla Anderson's daughter was like, because we have to. I told her that, I was like, Marla, it's just so frustrating. Why am I sitting here fighting for the same stuff that you guys were fighting for, you know? And she's like, mija, it's because you have to, you know? We have to, we can't afford not to. This project had the help of several collaborators, artworks from Milwaukee, MSOE, the United Migrant Opportunity Services, UWM, and the Butters Fetting Company, plus numerous funders. Look for the May 20th unveiling on our 1036 Facebook page and on milwaukeepbs.org. That does it for the April edition of 1036. Join us again next month at 7.30 p.m. on May 19th. We leave you now with a look at signs of spring in Milwaukee from above. <music>